Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Musical Book Review. Or as my Instagram followers decided, from A to Z, just fucking books in it, presented from under the covers, Bookaroo. Cheers guys. But I'm only reviewing one book today, and it's one I've been looking forward to for a while now. It's Flea's memoir, Acid for the Children. So what is Acid for the Children about? Well, it's basically Flea's origin story. It starts from when he was a kid, like the, it starts with the very f- earliest memories he can remember, and they kind of follows his life from living Australia to moving to New York, his parents going through a divorce, his mum meeting someone else, visiting his dad in Australia, going going to a new school. It follows kind of it follows everything. It really build. You really get to know Flea, and it is it is fairly interesting. However, the book's written in a... I don't know how to describe it. I'm going to say a very flea way. If you read a chapter of this book every day, it would take you a while to finish. Because, well, the chapters can be very short. They're very to the point and quite brief. I'll even show a chapter from later on in the book, actually, which is probably my favourite chapter. Uh, I, ju- it just, I just read it and it really gave me a chuckle. And it kind of sums up what this book is. There are obviously longer chapters, but some chapters will just often be around one certain memory or one certain event that happened, which kind of shaped his future. There's one really wholesome chapter where he meets Dizzy Gillespie at a gig. But then there's also another weird chapter early on where he talks about when he was in like nursery school, how he could see up the skirt of one of his like other nursery goers. And he just remembers kind of being just just catching his eye, I guess. It's just kind of one of those weird things he kind of puts in there. But this entire book is just kind of him being really honest about things he remembers and things that kind of shaped his life. Although the, the seeing up the skirt is never really brought back up again. So I don't know. It's just sort of there. One thing, though, about this book, as interesting as it is, it never really hooked me, which maybe isn't the point. Because this isn't like one of those page turner, every other chapter there's a twist sort of book. It's Flea having a genuine, honest reflection on his entire life. Well, I say entire life. This book is the first 20 years, except for a few paragraphs where it's future Flea talking for a bit. The unusual way this book is kind of written sort of reflects that. It's incredibly, what's the word, not professional. (laughs) But obviously, as the book goes on, eventually he does meet Anthony Kiedis, he meets Halel Slovak, and he starts really getting into playing bass after playing like trumpet for the first, like, for some of his, te- for his teenage years. And it's genuinely just really interesting to watch Flea, as we know him in the Red Hot Chili Peppers, kind of slowly come together to be this idea. And yeah, like, although the book never really hooked me, and like kind of the last quarter of the book kind of started to get a bit like it had some really interesting bits and quite reflective honest bits i felt like towards the end i was starting to count the page numbers wondering when i was going to be finished however we're now moving on to a whole new segment of the show which i like to call reading good reads book reviews that intro took me about five minutes in new score free <laughs> But yes, this segment basically is a, I'm going to go on book reads and read the reviews people have left for this book just to kind of, just to get some other perspectives and also to give my own opinions on what people thought of this book. So let's have a look. I think I'll probably stick to the ones that maybe give it more of a a low review because I feel like the higher praise ones are just going to like be people that just really enjoyed the book. I kind of want to find out people that maybe didn't enjoy the book too much. I feel like that's a a better perspective to look. Okay. Here's a good one. It felt like he was holding me down and forcing me to listen to something that he thought was profound. I get what this guy means. Obviously, Flea is a very spiritual person and often talks about how he feels like he has a connection to life and to the earth and to music, which I totally understand. And then reading his memoir where it's him reflecting on his life, like the good things and the bad things and what he regrets, there are going to be times when it does sound a bit... Like, you know, you ever get like into a conversation with that one person at a party who thinks they're just like the bee's knees and know everything about life and the universe? It can feel a bit like that. But I, I 
feel like you can't avoid that when you're like honestly reflecting on your life. There are going to be times when you do sound a bit profound. You're like you're trying to be profound. But I two out of five stars just for that. Like that that's a bit that's a bit harsh. Anyway, this book is yikes. See, <laughs> flea waxes but po po poetically about all kinds of vibing with the sound connecting with earth. All right, yeah, this is what I was just. I must have read this anyway. Isn't this man 60-ish by now? Some of the fuck have on to be endearing, but most of them, unfortunately, pure gibberish. Yeah, there are there are a lot of short chapters in this book, which are just, like, quick thoughts and a, just a bit out of nowhere. But I feel like that's Flea, and they're always something that are, is that is somewhat related to his life and, like, to how it affected him growing up. So I feel like I say, just throw it as gibberish, maybe a bit. Maybe a bit. I don't know. Uh, also, the book ends while he's still in his 20s, a miscalculation on my part, for sure. Yeah, it, the book ends pretty much after the debut gig of the band before the Chili Peppers, Tony Flo and the Miraculously Majestic Masters of Mayhem. And yes, I had to write that down. And this was made of Anthony Kiedis, Flea, Hillel Slovak and Jack Irons. And obviously, after this, Hillel would sadly pass away, and the band would eventually form into the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So yeah, the book ends right after their debut gig. And honestly, it's a nice way to end it, because I feel like everything you need to know about the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you can just find from interviews online. So this book is much more about the origin of Flea, and how Flea sort of became the Flea we know about. And I'm sick of saying the word Flea. Right, let's do one more negative review. I did feel like the book was a bit disjointed at times. I had a bit of trouble following the timeline. Yeah, because of the way it's written, it can be very disjointed. Although it does kind of seem to stay in order of how his life spanned out. But obviously Flea is working from memory. So, you know, at, at times it, it does kind of seem like there's just massive chunks of his life missing. But I feel like he can't go into every single detail about what he did when he was younger. One thing I did like is that he didn't try to gloss over his drug use or the crimes he committed as a teen and kid. Yeah, this is something I actually forgot to mention, and man is fully honest about some of the bad things he done. Like he gets into he gets into all the drugs he did and also like all the loot like all the robbery he did and stuff. Man, it's it's a fascinating read for sure. I I can't believe I actually forgot about that. But yeah, all in all I would I would recommend this book. It's not a long read. It took me about two weeks to read, but I didn't really push myself to read it as fast as I could. I could have probably read it in a few days, like considering how short some of the chapters are. And it's only like 350 pages long. So I just recommend it to anyone who really wants to know a bit more about Flea. So, but if you're not really a Flea fan, then you're probably not gonna enjoy this book too much. But thank you for watching. Uh, the next episode will be out next month and a new episode of the podcast will be out next week. Thank you for watching, goodbye.